Hi, and welcome back to the Let Yourself Sparkle podcast. Today we have with us Cynthia Blair Kane. She is the best selling author of the book, How to Meditate Like a Buddhist, a step by step guide for beginners. She demystifies this ancient practice of meditation and gently teaches you everything you need to know about building a meditation practice that works for you, including detailed guidance on posture, breathing, mindset, overcoming common obstacles, and more. With her expertise and encouragement, you will be able to establish a foundational meditation practice that can help you release stress and anxiety and overwhelm. She's going to tell us about how to calm anxiety, how to calm stress, which is exactly what I need right now. <laughs> <laughs> this has been like one of the most stressful weeks of my life. I don't, I have like the worst anxiety and yeah. getting the second COVID vaccine for some reason, just like pushed me over the edge. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was able to get it, but like, let me tell you, like, I've never tried meditating so hard in my life and I am not a master meditator. I didn't know what I was doing. And like, I literally was trying everything just to calm my nerves. So I would love for you to like walk us through how to meditate and how to calm nerves and how to just tame your anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So in terms of how to meditate, I, I love this question because the answer is so simple, yet the practice is hard to do, right? So how to meditate is truly being able to find one point of focus of anything, right? It can be your breath, it can be a sound, it can be um, an image, uh, it can be really, I mean, it could be a tree, right? It could be your clothes, it could be your kids crying, actually, right? Like you just need something, focus on and a place to sit and all you're doing really is you're sitting your eyes are closed your attention is on that point of focus so let's say it's on your breath and there's your attention it's on the inhale the exhale you get caught up in all these thoughts because we have so many thoughts right mm -hmm. um and there they are they're just hanging out and they're trying to grab your attention. And all we want to do is just notice that they're there. And then when we see, okay, I am completely away from my breath. I am totally caught up in next week, yesterday, what I just said to somebody that I didn't mean to say to somebody, the list of to-dos that I have, the emails that I want to write, all of that. Once you notice, that's the most beautiful point because then you get to say to yourself, hey, thanks so much. Thanks for sharing. I'm just going to come back now and put my attention back onto my breath. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how many times you have to do that because that's really the practice of meditation. The practice is to get distracted, to notice that you're distracted and then to come back to the present moment. Got it. Um, so really how to meditate is to find a place where you feel comfortable, where you can sit normally without distraction, right? Um, and then just choose your point of focus, put your attention on it, let yourself get distracted, notice you're distracted, be all, thanks so much for sharing, and just come back to where your attention is. Amazing. Because I know like in the past when I've sat there and like tried to meditate, I get so frustrated with myself because all these other thoughts would come yeah. and I would just be like, I'm failing at this. Like I can't even sit you're not, you're, not. <laughs> you're doing it correctly. You're doing it really, I mean, that is really what meditation is, it's just noticing all of the thoughts. And rarely do we spend time in the quiet to notice our thoughts, right? Because so much of, especially with anxiety, so much of it is pushing it away because we don't want to feel it. We don't want to feel the fear of it. We don't want the physical reactions that we feel to it, right? The emotional reactions we feel to it. Um, and so we try to push it away, but that's, that's truly why it continues to come back, right? Whereas in meditation, what we're doing is we're allowing ourselves to be as we are without judging it or evaluating it, Amazing. right? So you're sitting there and you're having all the thoughts and it's just to see, okay, these are my thoughts. My thoughts right now are doing this, but my body is doing this. And what it helps us to do really is it helps us to change our relationship to the thought. So we don't see ourselves as the thought, but we see ourselves mm -hmm in control of the thought, hmm. right? 
And so it's the same kind of with anxiety. The reason why meditation really helps with anxiety is because um, what meditation shows you, I mean, there's scientific reasons, right? In that you're moving out of kind of that fight flight state, the stress response state, and you're moving into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. But then the other is that you start to see that you are not your anxiety, but anxiety itself is just sensation. Hmm. So if you, if you experience anxiety, especially in meditation, you can, I don't know if you've ever experienced anxiety within meditation. Yeah. Yeah. And that is not a fun, that's not fun. Um, I, I went on a 10 day silent meditation retreat Yeah, and that was probably not the best idea considering that I didn't even know how to meditate. And that was like my first attempt. <laughs> mm-hmm. It can be good though. It could be good. It was a bit much. I, yeah. it was amazing so, uh, for three days, but I think by like the fourth day, I was like, I think I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's intense. Um, that's really intense. So I'm, I'm sure that that was an experience for you for sure. Because when people first start out meditating, I mean, my, my advice is like to take five long, slow, deep breaths in the morning, just to start getting you like used to what, breath actually feels like what inhaling and exhaling feels like because rarely do we even know what that means like put your attention on the breath it's like well where's my breath like what what is my breath right so and then you get all caught in that and you can go all the places right um but when you experience anxiety in meditation and it's the same when you experience it out of meditation And like I said before, it's like, we want to push it away because we don't want it, but we actually put our attention to it and we feel it as sensation and we, we allow it to be there and we see it as a part of ourselves. We can talk to it differently, right? Mm -hmm. So we can talk to it and be like, Hey, I totally see you. And I understand that you're here and you like, you're causing a lot of like shortness of breath for me right now. And I'm not not really enjoying this, but I'm going to let you be here. And I'm going to see, can I just like, can we become friends in this moment? Mm. Can I let you be here, right? Be alongside me without you directing me, but I get to talk to you differently, right? Amazing. So that's really like the, almost like it's your child or something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you are inviting it in to nurture it and to be like, it's, it's okay. Like I see you. And, and it's okay. Like we've got this, you know? Amazing. Amazing. So like for somebody who's new and wants to get into the practice of meditation, like what would you recommend that they start to set up? You're saying like, start with five breaths and then how long would you do that before you like move into like a longer set? Yeah. So I think that, um, I think understanding that it's not about becoming like a good meditator, right? Or getting to like a certain place in meditation. Um, It really is about whatever your path is to to accessing yourself in the stillness, right? So I think to start, it's hard for us to be with ourselves in stillness and in silence. Um, and so beginning with five long, slow, deep breaths in the morning, it's like you wake up, you go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, you come back, you close your eyes, you put your attention on the inhale and the exhale. That's one inhale, exhale, two to five. Then what you can then move into after that becomes like probably after like a week of that, just feeling kind of normal, I would move into counting your breaths. So you count up to 10. So Mm -hmm inhale, exhale one, inhale, exhale two. And that becomes your point of attention. So then you get distracted Hmm. and you're all caught up and you're not in the numbers and you're like, oh, I have no idea what number I'm on. And then that's the beautiful moment where you get to be like, awesome, I'm just gonna start again because I can always start again. And so then you start again at number one, right? Until you get to 10, like consciously, right? Then you're just continuing to get distracted and come back and recount. Then after that, once you're able to really do the one to 10 without, um, you know, without, I'd say 
getting distracted at every num at every level, then I would sit with a guided meditation, like a breath meditation mm -hmm. um, or a body scan meditation. But I I always recommend you go guided, especially in the beginning, nice. um, and just for five minutes, and then you move to ten minutes. So like five to ten minute meditations are wonderful. Can you lead us through a guided meditation? Yeah, I could do a guided meditation right now. Yeah. How long do you want me to guide you for? Um, you wanted what do you think? Like a minute or two minutes or yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and close your eyes. You can be seated on your chair with your feet planted firmly on the ground and your hands resting gently on your thighs. And begin by taking deep breaths, inhaling slowly and fully through the nostrils and exhaling deeply. And let your breathing return to its natural rhythm and depth. There's no need to force or control the breath, just let it be natural. And start to notice the sounds around you. Near and far, sound is not a barrier to this practice. Maybe you don't hear anything. Quiet can also be a sound. And the idea is just to notice the sound, not identify it, wonder why it's happening, or evaluate it, just notice it. And now as I call your attention to certain areas of the body, just see if you can soften them and relax them. So relax your head. Relax your forehead. Your eyes. Relax your cheeks. Relax your ears. Let go of your jaw. Relax your entire face. Let your shoulders relax back and down. Soften your chest. Your diaphragm and just let your belly go completely. Relax into the chair or your cushion. And relax from your hip to your toe and your right side. Now relax your left leg from hip to toes. Relax your arms. Let go of any tension in your hands. And just notice the body now relaxed and still. Begin to put your attention now on where you feel the breath most clearly in the body. It might be at your nose or your chest or your belly. And just let that be your point of attention. And if at any time thoughts come in, distractions come in that pull you away, just say thank you for sharing and come back to your point of focus.
you might notice your breath speeds up or slows down. It may get shallower, it may get deeper. Just notice what's happening. There's no need to judge it or evaluate it. Just see if you can allow it to be as it is. Let go of the breath and just sit in the stillness. And start to take some deeper breaths now, coming back into the physical body. And with your eyes so closed, you can circle your wrists, maybe circle your head, move your shoulders up, back and down. And then stretch out into space. Just feel what space feels like, how much space you want to take up, how little space you want to take up. And when you're ready, you can blink your eyes open. Just notice the shapes and colors around you. And come back. Thank you. You're welcome. That was very nice. <laughs> Good. I hope that was comfortable. Yeah, that was. That was awesome. Thank you. I will mm -hmm. replay this. <laughs> Good. Over and over. <laughs> I will. I, I would love to set up a daily practice like that. And I, I like that you reminded me in the middle of it that it was okay if there were other thoughts and for them to go away. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a I think that's an important piece. Like to because when you are meditating, right, you're and there's a lot of silence, especially in the beginning when you're first starting to meditate, that's when the doubt can come in in the wondering, like, am I doing this right? What's happening? should I be it have they left you know like mm -hmm. those questions and so I think it is important to constantly kind of do little touch points throughout absolutely yeah thank you so much I feel like refreshed after that and <laughs> not to hear that yeah I mean you'll have many different experiences in meditation not any one will be the same as the next right um and sometimes you can feel relaxed other times you may feel energized other times you may feel more anxious than when you started mm -hmm. and it's truly to know that any experience you have in meditation is the experience that you need to be having at that time um and so it's um it's it's hard to to think about it in this way because a lot of people have expectation for meditation mm -hmm. but really it's important for us to like let go of the expectations we have of what meditation can do so that we can simply be in the practice itself a good way to go through life too yes <laughs> like over just mm -hmm. yeah be yeah. open to the experiences mm -hmm. yeah meditation is truly i believe so a lot of the work that um i do is focused on communication and using meditation within how we interact in our day-to-day -day. Mm -hmm. and so much of the practice of meditation mimics how we connect right in our day-to-day -day in terms of being distracted and learning how to come back into the present. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. So have you seen any like amazing transformations through your work? Like, have you seen, like, what, can you share some amazing stories that you've seen with like, you know, how meditation has changed somebody's life? Yeah. I mean, well, firsthand meditation changed my life for sure. Um, Got it. I used to be, very, I used to have a lot of anxiety. Um, I had a problem sleeping um, and just a lot of self judgment, really, and evaluation, a lot of judgment. Um, and what meditation helped me to do was it really helped me soften to myself in terms of allowing myself to be as I am mm -hmm. in like the most wonderful moments of myself and in the worst moments of myself, and to just, um, instead of that harsh critical voice that would normally come in and kind of chastise me for not being enough, um, what meditation really helped to do was help me to start seeing myself through like a loving lens, to be able to see myself with more compassion and to want to really nurture the person that I am. Um, and that completely changed my world. It also um, helped me go from being extremely passive aggressive and um, defensive and taking everything personally to seeing clearly. And I think that that's 
the piece with meditation that it, it really does. It helps you see clearly so that then you can um, choose how you want to engage and how you want to interact from a place of, you know, truth as opposed to a place of emotion. Mm -hmm. um, because what it does is it helps you become more responsive instead of reactive. Um, and there's many more benefits from me, but then in terms of, you know, students that I've worked with, um, I would say, you know, health-wise also like blood pressure, right? It reduces blood pressure. Um, it um, improves fertility. Um, it um, memory is another big uh, change that happens for people. Their memories become clearer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, easier time just allowing, like not fighting with what is, right? Um, and so it, it ends up helping within marriages. It helps with, you know, parent and child, like parent child dynamics. Um, and um, just being able to make decisions. Um, not a lot of like the indecisiveness that can plague people. It really helps with because again, what it teaches you to do is it teaches you to go inward, to trust yourself. And so once you're able to really trust yourself, you're then, you then feel capable, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you can be faced with difficult interactions or difficult decisions. Um, and instead of feel like you have to go outward for the answer, you go inward for the answer and then you go, you decide from there. Mm -hmm. um, so it just creates a lot more um, like self-trust, right? But then also what it does is that it then opens you up to you're going to hear a siren go by. Um, and then it opens you up to trusting others, which, you know, for, for a long time, for me, the world was not necessarily, it wasn't a friendly place. Mm -hmm. And so what meditation really helped to do was to suddenly, you know, people seemed nicer and like the world was more vibrant and um, it, it has, it has a way of helping you see from other people's perspectives um, and just seeing the good in everybody. Wow. And um, yeah, it's quite incredible. It really is quite incredible. And I've been practicing since 2011, 2012. And um, I mean, my world is so drastically different from what it was before that time. So, yeah. How, how many minutes or hours a day do you spend meditating? So my practice has changed a lot over the years. So when I first started meditating, I was meditating twice a day for 20 minutes, 20 minutes in the morning and then 20 minutes in the afternoon. That practice changed for me once I had kids. Once I had kids, everything changed. Yeah. So um, my practice has uh, gone through many different iterations. Now what it looks like, it looks like 10 minutes a day. Um, and so, and it's 10 minutes a day in the morning. So my morning is basically, I wake up, I do my five long, slow, deep breaths. I set intentions for the day. And then I, you know, we have our mornings here. I drop my kids at daycare. I come home, I work out, then I meditate. So that's and how, how long do you do the second one is like also five minutes. So the second one is 10 minutes. The second one is 10 minutes. I do, I do the five long, slow, deep breaths in the morning to just set the day, um, 10 minutes in the morning. And then I do five long, slow, deep breaths at night. It's almost like um, uh, one of the instructors in uh, the training program that I run, he calls it like bookending. You can bookend certain things. And this to me is like bookending the day, right? You right. open the day with five long, slow, deep breaths. You close the day with five long, slow, deep breaths. So it's very intentional. I love it. And like, at what point, would you recommend that like parents could involve their children in the practice or teach yeah. it to their kids? Yeah. So normally like age seven is the most ideal time for a child to understand the practice of meditation, meaning that you can give them a word like cat and you can have the, that word be their point of focus that they say, over, like it would be like a mantra, right? Um, so they'll, they could say cat over and over again when they are not there and they're off, they come back to the word cat, right? Mm -hmm. 
they can get that concept. So at seven is when they could really start practicing. Before then, it's more um, like more mindful practices that I think kids can really relate to, right? So you're not having them sit necessarily for 10 minutes, but you're having them, you know, sit and then, you know, have their arms go up and like shake their hands and then have their hands stop. And then you're like, oh, what does that feel like? Like put your attention on the sensation of your hands, right? right. Or, um, you know, think about someone that you love very much and who is that person? Like even just that, that can be like gratitude practice, right? So it's less about getting them to like sit in formal practice and more mindful mindful practices. That's what I would call them. Nice. Right. Or like breathing, right? There's some breathing, um, breathing practices that are, they are meditative practice, but it's not what we think of when we think of meditation, right? Um, like if you do, you can do like an inhale and exhale around the fingers. Mm -hmm. So you inhale up to the top of the thumb, you have them exhale to the bottom, inhale up to the top of the pointer, exhale. And that's, that's an exercise they can do, right? That's meditative. Um, but it's not like seated practice. Right. I love it. I'm going to practice that with my kids today. Yeah. It's a great one where you just trace your hand. And then another one is if you, um, you can do a, like an activity where you draw, I don't know how old your kids are, but like, uh, okay. Yeah. So like, uh, you could draw a triangle or you could draw a square and you could have it be, okay, when we get up to the top here, we're going to inhale from the bottom of this to the top. Then we're going to hold it. Then we're going to exhale, hold it, inhale, hold it. And it's, it's a fun, you know, it's a fun exercise. I like that. Awesome. This was so great to talk to you. I, I feel like you gave me such a gift. I'm going to, I'm going to start bookending my day with that, with the Quiet. breaths and the intentions. I love that. So you said the morning is the five breaths and the intentions. And then the night, do you also set intentions or do you talk about what you're gra grateful for or? So, yeah. So the night is, um, the night is not so the night does have gratitude in it, right? In the sense of like what I'm grateful for, but the night is more um, five long, slow, deep breaths. And then when I lay down at night, I say good night to every body part. Mm. And then I, then I'm out, like then I'm off to sleep. So I love yeah. mm. Thank And you. that's the other practice I tell like my kids to do um, is to say good night to their body parts because what you'll notice, especially if you have difficulty sleeping, um, is that this will help you just enter that really deep, relaxed state where you fall asleep. I love it. We could all use more solid sleep these days. Yes, it's <laughs> true. Rest is important. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, this was awesome. So let's talk about the takeaways. So Meditation does not have to be about focusing on your breath. It can be, but you can also, you know, if that doesn't come naturally to you, you can also focus on anything. You can focus on the word cat. And, you know, when you think of starting a meditation practice or making it part of your life, like it doesn't need to be this huge commitment. It doesn't need to be hours of time. You don't need to go away on a 10 day retreat. It doesn't need to be this massive commitment. It can be starting your day with five breaths and focusing on them and setting an intention. It could be ending your day that way. It can be small steps and they, these small practices can have a profound effect on your life. Thank you so much for listening to the Let Yourself Sparkle podcast. Please feel free to share this episode with anybody who you feel could, could use these amazing tips. And every episode of the Let Yourself Sparkle podcast shares tips and tricks for how you can lower stress and anxiety and depression and start living your best life. Um, if you want more tips on how to start living your best life, live, be the best, most vibrant version of you, you can go to www.youcanchoosetobehappy.com to download my free book about 12 easy steps to live a happier life. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.